back you guys tonight we're going to be working on the Diamondback FS9 now I know you guys have seen this model pistol before on the market but one of the things that you have not seen is myself work on one of these so I had a customer reach out to me they had some needs they said what do you think I know you haven't done one before give me your thoughts on it so I said yeah I think if we're not doing anything super crazy I'll take a stab at it We'll see if we can turn something out that's kind of new to the market. Just, uh, you know, just kind of really show some love for this particular model since there just really isn't a whole lot out there. So let's briefly talk about what we're doing so you have a better understanding of exactly what you're watching as it unfolds. We're going to be doing some pretty basic stuff to the slide itself. Now we're going to do a top window here. So between where the, uh, the front iron sight would be and where the barrel locks up, we're going to run a window in through here. And then on the sides, we're going to do somewhat of a matching window. Now, the sides aren't going to be 100% matching because we're going to be following the same angle of the serration. So we're going to end up leaving one step here, one step here, and then we're going to cut here. We're going to be cutting through here, and then, of course, in the end, we're going to leave one step here, and then we're going to leave the end. So it should be pretty nice and proportional overall. We're going to be leaving a, a fairly decent amount of material between uh, where the barrel is going to lock up and also where the front nose is, not only on the sides, but we're going to be leaving that nice material on the top as well so overall I think we're gonna be able to see some nice barrel and that's one of the main things we're going for so we happen to be doing some barrel work as well you guys have seen the hive pattern that I've done in the past we're gonna be doing that on the barrel not only the, what would be the top and the ejection side we're also gonna be doing the straight fluting and the hive between the flutes so it's gonna be a pretty interesting build overall um, I'm pretty excited about working on it once again because I just happen to have not had an opportunity to work on one of these before so it's gonna be pretty exciting just to see a, a some of a new product uh, or a new uh, new design on a new product for me because it's just something that we um, haven't taken a stab at yet so definitely excited about that so guys what we're gonna do is we're gonna get over to the Tormach 770 we're gonna go ahead and start that slide work I want to go ahead and finish that up uh, we're gonna probably do a sandblast on the slide itself I'm not going to be doing the coloring, so we're only going to get so much of a view here at the end. Um, we're going to go ahead and get that cut work done, get this sandblasted. We're going to move over. We're going to get that laser work done on the barrel. We're going to put it together. We're going to see exactly how it came out, and uh, let's give some thoughts and opinions on it in the end, coming from that factory image to, uh, to that overall cut image. So let's see what we come up with.
guys, let's take a look and see exactly how this came out overall. Now, I am extremely pleased with the way in which this pattern lays with the factory design. Now, some of the firearms that we work on on the channel are bare, they're blank, right? So we end up having a lot of the Glocks, we end up having a lot of those M&Ps, and we know how to work around the existing design. So whether it has some text on it, whether it's got some, you know, some cuts on it like the M&Ps have, I'm pretty familiar with how to work around those. But one of the big hurdles you always run into with working on something new is how is the custom pattern gonna lay with the factory pattern? And how are they gonna, how are they gonna play together? Is it gonna be nice? Is it not gonna be nice? Is it gonna be more challenging than maybe uh, what it seems? And kind of as I stated at the beginning of this video, I've never worked on one of these before. I've never held one, never looked at one, and really um, that can become kind of challenging because until you have it in hand, you don't know how thick those walls are. You don't know how high the inside channel is for the frame. So there happens to be a lot of small details that are on every slide from every manufacturer that always play into a crucial effect of how it's actually going to play when you start working on it. You know, is there a pinch point when I put it in the vise? Is there a chance of damaging it while I'm holding it? You know, so there's all these little things that always happen to throw, you know, a wrench into the plan. So um, definitely pleased with the way it came out. Let's go ahead and, and talk about it a little bit more. Then let's talk about the back optic cut a little bit that was not part of the original plan. That was something that we changed kind of halfway through this build. It was a need that the customer had. Um, but overall, just uh, I think it came out really, really nice. So we ended up doing the top pocket. We did a pretty heavy chamfer on the top pocket. It's hard to see. I'm gonna move this barrel out of the way here so that way we're not getting any focus off it or to it, I should say. And um, we ended up doing a pretty heavy chamfer. I'm, I'm liking how that is. We're obviously gonna be able to see some nice barrel. I was not familiar overall with um, the integrity of the slide and of the makeup of the metal. So I ended up leaving uh, a pretty good amount of barrel lock up from where it locks up to where the hole is. We have way more than I would ever leave on a Glock, almost double. Um, so there happens to be a lot of uh, safety there that we've left in there. There seems to be a lot of that rigidity left over that we're not really uh, you know, gambling with, so to speak, because it's a new, um, a new frame, and, or I'm sorry, a new slide to me. So the sides came out pretty good. Um, overall, I'm pretty pleased we ended up cutting through halfway through here, halfway through there. Um, I'm really liking these little nubs that are left over on the top and the bottom. So it's not so much like we just left like a little, you know, like a, um, a serration, a serration, and then shaved it, and then a serration, then a micro serration. We left those nubs there. I'm really liking that. It's definitely going to assist with, uh, you know, a hand over forward uh, cocking um, style, which a lot of you guys do. So it ends up being one of those deals where that's definitely going to assist in that as well. And uh, overall, it's pretty pleasing to look at. Same thing on this side, very pleased with the way it came out. Um, just overall gonna be able to see some nice barrel. And then last but not least, we ended up adding the cut work on the back for the optic. I have an optic here. We're gonna go ahead and drop that in. And it's gonna look something like this. Now, of course, guys, you know me, I'm gonna get you some real pictures, but this is just the, the quick assembly. This is just the overview here. Um, the issue that you have with this particular slide is there's really not enough room to add a Glock dovetail to the front. Um, having done this as my first one, I think that this could have come back a little bit to the rear. You got to be careful because there's a rear plate that goes on the back. You don't want to cut into that channel. And the other issue that you want to, you know, take into consideration if you were even remotely thinking about a uh, forward dovetail would be where this little notch is for the barrel. So where the barrel seats in here, there's like this little cone shaped cup area. You don't want to get near that by any means and you also want to stay away from your uh there's a like a sort of like a roll pin it's more of like a pin pin it's not really a roll pin but there's a pin that goes through here that ends up holding the extractor in place on the side so um that's something else to take into consideration when you're talking about cutting a dovetail so uh, i think if i was to make a recommendation in the future to my customers it would be go with the leopold delta that has a built-in iron sight back here so you could actually mount it like that and be a little farther forward but you'd have enough room for uh, the actual um, iron sight to be used there. And then of course, the front hole is the same as a Glock. So you end up using the uh, the set, the, what would be like a standard suppressor high sight for the front. So definitely a lot of options there in order to achieve what you're after. Um, as I said, once again, this was new to me. So I was kind of learning as this project evolved. 
uh, sort of as it goes because I didn't know exactly what to expect overall. So definitely a good thought there um, on the optic. The customer happened to have a spare, so they said, hey, can we throw it on there? And I was like, yeah, definitely, let's make that happen. So we ended up doing the barrel. The barrel was pretty interesting because I've done a lot of different barrels on the market, lots of aftermarket, lots of factory Glocks, lots of M&Ps. And for some reason, this barrel was very uh, resilient to taking the punishment of the laser. It seemed to absorb it maybe more than actual remove material. It was kind of interesting. So I'm, I'm curious on the grade of stainless that this is. I, I work with a lot of different stainless, a lot of different grade titaniums, but it just happened to be that it was more like just taking that punishment and not really making a huge effect on the actual um, pattern. So it ended up taking quite a bit longer to run it than what I would normally have. Um, obviously you leave it on there long enough, you're going to get the results you're after. Um, it was just something new to me. It was something that I had not experienced in the past. So that was kind of cool. It kind of gave me one of those things that I'm going to take a look at and see exactly what that is and, and kind of maybe what's going on. It might need to be a frequency change or something like that. But overall it was, um, something that we still were able to turn out as our final product. We went with that hive, went with the hive on the top and hive on the side. Definitely cool. Now I don't know what the customer's doing with this, if, if it's tin coated, they're just gonna polish it. I just did like a brush sand with oil. Um, so basically get it back to that factory image and I taped off most of the areas that would have been um, when I hit it with the sandblaster. So I sandblasted to clean up most of these areas and, and it could probably have been gone over a little bit more still, but overall I want to get it back to that close to factory image. So let's go ahead and put it in. Let's see exactly how it looks in the end. I'm very pleased with it. I think even if it was going with like a, a gold barrel or something along that line, it would look really nice. Now, I don't know what's going on with the coating. I ended up just running a quick sandblast over it. That's going to end up going back to the customer. The customer is going to figure out what they're doing. Um, I ended up sandblasting the whole slide because if they're going to do it in-house, not everybody has a sandblaster. So I ended up kind of just moving them one step forward to what would be their final product. They can basically just soak it and then coat it and then cook it. So they don't have to do quite as much prep work as what they would uh, typically do. Uh, in in most, most of the cases, people that send their stuff out to have it done, they don't have all the tools to do it. So I try to just assist you guys a little bit in that, um, you know, to save you that extra step of, of hand sanding it. This is not, not anything that you guys need to do. I can just run it through real quick and make that happen. So definitely pleased overall with the way it came out. So guys, what I'm gonna do is, at this point, I have to take it outside. I've got to get you guys a couple pictures of it. We're going to bring it back. We're probably going to take a look at it a little bit greater. And um, we'll see what those pictures look like under some natural light. Um, we usually can get a little bit better overall uh, design idea in our head because I'll put the optic on it and it'll be under some light. It'll be out of this environment and into a natural environment. So, guys, let's uh, let's make that happen. Let's bring it back and let's uh, let's discuss it. All right, guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed that content and happened to be something new that we have not done before. So definitely, definitely cool. I would encourage you to go back, watch some of our older content on YouTube. If you happen to like it, give us a thumbs up on that video. It assists with newcomers to be able to find that content a little bit easier. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, guys. We happen to be doing a lot of stuff that the other companies don't offer, okay? My business model is definitely different from the market. The market says, hey, I've got five or six different patterns. Thanks for reaching out to me. Let me know which one you want. We'll go ahead and get your work turned out. That's not me. Mine is, let me know exactly what you wanna have done to your style. Let's work that style. Let's go through that process. Let's build something that you're after. Let's mix and match. Let's do some stuff that no one's done before. Let's add some laser work to that CNC work. So these two pieces of machinery end up working beautifully with each other. Um, we do have a video coming up really soon on the Tormach. We happen to be pushing up onto that one year mark. I've got a lot of thoughts going through my head. I wanna give those out to you guys, let you know my opinion on it, especially in the firearm industry and exactly how uh, it can assist you and some of the hurdles that you're going to experience if you do go down this path of purchasing one of these machines. So it happens to be a lot of good information, especially if you're in the same market that I'm in or you believe that you're going to be in the same market that I'm in, something you're working for. Uh, hopefully I can encourage you to make a correct decision decision. So guys, also, we have a lot of stuff going on on our Facebook page over the next couple of weeks. We're going to be doing three gun shows back to back to back. 
We're going to be posting the where and the when on those dates. We're also going to be doing some stuff most likely live from the shows. We'll try to do that a little bit, walk around, show a little bit. So there's an opportunity if you're not in the state of North Carolina and you're out of state, you want to see exactly how the shows are, how they unfold and what they look like. Opportunity to see a little bit there. And if you are local to us, there's an opportunity to come out and actually see us see the projects that you've seen on the show, put your hands on them, decide if it's something that you wanna have done and let us know exactly what your project is and we'll start and get that ball rolling and we'll it will progressively work faster and better and get it turned out to exactly what you're looking for. So we'll get you that turnaround time, we'll get you that completed quote and we'll, uh, we'll really work with you hand in hand to get that turned out for you. So definitely a cool opportunity. Guys, in the video description of all of my videos, you're gonna find I have my email in there. I also have a link to the webpage. Go to the webpage, go to the contacts tab, fill it out, or just click on the email. Send me an email with what you got going on. Let me know exactly what your project is. Let's see if it's something that's feasible, something that we can actually do. Maybe it's something new uh, that we haven't done before. Maybe it's just a mix and match uh, that you want to have done, something that you really liked and you really, you really, really took hold of that pattern and you liked it a whole lot. We can put that onto your firearm, okay? We're not a cookie cutter shop like the rest. That's not us. If that's what you're looking for, sorry, it's just not us. If you're looking for true customization, modification to your liking, you have found the right place. I am the right guy. You just need to reach out to me. We need to go through that process. We need to get the uh, project started and the ball rolling, and we need to get your project turned out and get it back to you. So guys, if you need anything, feel free to shoot me an email. My number is also on the uh, webpage. Feel free to shoot me a text or call me if, you, if need be. Let's figure out exactly what we can do for you. Have a good one.